Hello beautiful peeps, this is Chris from TechSpeed and I'm here with Google's big new Pixel Premium smartphones fresh for 2019. Here on the left you've got the standard Pixel 4, be hitting the UK on October the 24th from 669 quid. The XL version lands at the same time, that starts at £829. Bit bigger and some more powerful specs stuck away in there as well. Going to get them fully unboxed and do a comparison side by side with them so you know which one might be best for you. And for more of the latest and greatest tech, please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell. As far as the the actual contents of the boxes go. I'm not expecting there to be any difference. Let's do them both at the same time. There you go, a bit of simultaneous unboxing action. That's what we like. The actual phones themselves, we'll just shove aside for now. Check out what you actually get in those boxes. And of course, a bit of pokey pin device. You can actually get your SIM in there and that just has a sort of a quick how to get started guide and everything as well. You got your Type-C USB charging cable, of course, and a quick switch adapter as well. And then in here will just be the plug. Nice bit of three pin effort. There it is there if you're particularly excited about uh, smartphone charging plugs and frankly who isn't and that's it sadly not very exciting there's no uh, headphones or anything bundled in there either and no headphone dongles either so uh, so that's a bit of a shame because normally you do get a dongle because of course there's bug roll headphone jack action anyway as you can see there I have the black models of both the Pixel 4 and the Pixel 4 XL you can pick them up in three different hues uh, so black white or the also orange I believe it's called bit of a wanky name but uh, uh, it's quite a uh, vibrant hue, definitely if you prefer a more colourful smartphone, that'll be uh, probably the one for you. As you can see here, the black model, very straightforward, very simple affair. It's a bit of a departure, of course, from the old uh, two-tone design that you used to get with the Pixel smartphones, uh, which is probably fair enough because obviously we're in the fourth generation now. If they stuck with the same design every time like Apple does with its iPhones, probably be getting a little bit stale by now. Because there's not actually much in the way of design frills to speak of there. You get a Gorilla Glass 5 back end. It's Gorilla Glass 5 up front as well, so at least they should be pretty durable. Your dinky bit of Google branding down below, of course. And you've got a strip of aluminium uh, running around the outsides there, just separating the two glass edges and it's almost flat as well um, so not quite as curved as uh, quite a lot of its rivals so it does give the Pixel 4 smartphones a bit of a brick like feel uh, though nothing too troublesome and uh, it's actually got a fairly sort of soft touch uh, vibe to it as well this band and then of course there's the much maligned square camera chassis there on the back as well which uh, certainly stands out it's quite similar to the uh, Apple iPhone 11 effort as well just jutting forth from the surface there not entirely sure on the aesthetics to be perfectly honest it's something a bit different but is it different good or just different a bit weird the standard pixel 4 is of course more pleasingly compact and uh, definitely a lot lighter than its xl brethren as well it's 162 grams compared with the 193 gram xl version uh, looks like they've both got some gas in the tank it's going to get them both set up right now and then we can do a proper tour of the features and the rest of the specs i'm just going to stick my sim card into the standard pixel 4 to begin with get that one reviewed and then I'll move on to the XL model. It's just a single SIM on both as well. They don't support dual SIM and there's no micro SD memory card support or anything like that. And so there we have it. We're through the setup and we're into the Android 10 desktops here on the Pixel 4 and the Pixel 4 XL. As you can see, uh, quite a funky desktop on the call there. Lots of uh, random shapes and stuff. It sort of jiggle about as you move the uh, the phone. Very, uh, very unique. And now that the new Pixels are actually turned on and everything, it's much more clear to see that Google has done away with that kind of weird annoying moustache notch that it has on the Pixel 3 handsets instead. It's a nice flat plain finish uh, just like you get on the Pixel 3a and the 3a XL. There's quite a chunky bit of bezel action up top of course which I'm imagining not a lot of people will be happy with. Um, personally I'm not too bothered because it does have a lot of smarts packed into uh, that general area. I'm sure it is slightly jarring coming from uh, the likes of the OnePlus 7T which has very little bezel action at all surrounding that display but to be honest the Pixel 4 is nice and compact anyway so it's a good pleasing hand size. Feels good because the Pixel 4 XL definitely much more a beast more of a standard smartphone size so quite a hand filler you'd definitely be struggling to reach all the way up to that notifications bar and of course there's no rear mounted fingerprint sensor anymore for swiping down the notifications panel but the good news is uh, in Android 10 here with the Pixel 4 smartphones you can swipe it down from anywhere on the screen view so here on the Pixel 4 you get a 5.7 inch OLED screen that's slightly boosted to a 6.3 inch OLED here on the Pixel 4 XL both sport a 19 by 9 cinematic aspect 
Twitch, you're also perfect for watching a bit of Netflix, YouTube, whatever you fancy. The resolution has actually changed up between the two as well as the size. So you actually get a Quad HD Plus panel here on the Pixel 4 XL, packing 537 pixels per inch. Nice crisp finish for your visuals. Here on the Pixel 4, it's a Full HD Plus, still nice and sharp, 444 pixels per inch, so you definitely can't sniff at it. Both of the new premium pixels support HDR, of course, as you would expect. You get nice sharp contrast, true to life colors and everything, gorgeous stuff. And they both support 90 hertz refresh rate as well. So uh, navigating and everything nice and smooth and anything that supports 90 hertz will be displayed at that refresh rate. Uh, and then the Pixel 4 and the 4XL can both drop down to 60 hertz or standard refresh rate for your menial tasks when you don't need that really slick smoothness. And the good news is you get a proper stereo speaker output with both of the Pixels as well. So let's try it on the standard Pixel 4 first. Wow. Well, that is a very respectable volume from the little pixel right there. And uh, yeah, a nice powerful sound as well. It doesn't sound tinny or anything on that maximum volume. It's definitely very impressive. Let's try it here on the XL model. You know what? I can't actually tell much of a difference between the standard Pixel 4 and the Pixel 4 XL. They both sound nice and meaty. Um, it's definitely strong. Of course, you don't get a headphone jack with either of these two bad boys, but they do spot the usual Bluetooth 5 and everything. If you've got a dongle from one of your previous Pixels, if you're a bit of a Google smartphone fan, then you can use that, of course, to slap in a wired pair. You can, of course, change up that desktop in the usual way just by a long pressing. Go to Styles and Wallpapers. That'll also be buried away in the Settings menu as well. As you can see, you can choose from a variety of different themes. You can actually uh, get sketching yourself and uh, yeah so yeah, you can really embrace your inner artist and of course Android 10 boasts all kind of great features compared with the original Android Pie. You actually start off in the default dark mode here as well, which is fantastic because I do love this dark mode. Still nice, punchy, colourful icons and everything. Everything's just so logically laid out. And of course, as I mentioned before, there's no fingerprint sensor mounted on the back of the Pixel 4 or the Pixel 4 XL, and they don't have an in-display fingerprint sensor either. So like the iPhone, they just use a bit of face unlock instead. So let's just get this set up. So uh, see below to learn how to rotate your head. I'm kind of hoping that everyone knows how to rotate their own head. It's not that difficult. Uh, I've just got to stick myself oh, into the, both of the little globey things. I've just got to clear all of these tiles. It's certainly doing a very thorough job making sure it's uh, captured every little bit of my face, which is good. So hopefully it means it'll be nice and accurate, of course. Get my chin in there. Lots of bum fluff. And as you can see there, your face data isn't just used for unlocking your phone, it can also be used to sign into apps and also to make contactless payments as well. And you've got the option to skip the lock screen entirely, uh, which is great, something that you don't get on the iPhone, so definitely leave that ticked. And of course, one of the big new features on the standard Pixel and the Pixel 4 XL as well is the fact that it's got radar support in there as well for motion gestures. This is very different from your typical gesture support where it usually uses the selfie camera to detect when you're sort of waving in front of the device. Now it can actually detect your motion just based on on that radar text, as you can see there, swipe it across, it will move the uh, the theme and jiggle it about the place. But of course, that's not the only use for the radar tech. It would be a bit silly if it was. Both the Pixel 4 and the XL can actually detect when you're reaching for them. It'll then immediately scan for my face, and as you can see there, unlock straight into a bit of Android. Nice. And that radar can also be used to do simple hand gestures. So for instance, if you're playing some music, as I am right here, if you just swipe like so, it'll skip you to the next song. Uh, sorry, I can't actually play this awesome music, unfortunately, because of royalty issues on YouTube. And you can swipe the other way to return to the start of the track. Quite handy. If you're cooking or something like that, you don't want to get greasy crap all over your lovely new Pixel Premium smartphone. And of course, both the Pixel 4 and the Pixel 4 XL support a bit of that edge sensor as well, so you can get uh, you see the Google Assistant up with just a quick frantic squeeze. So yeah, not really any differences to speak of between the Pixel 4 and the Pixel 4 XL when it comes to the general features. Uh, they both support eSIM as well as uh, Nano SIM. Of course, both got Wi-Fi 5 support, not Wi-Fi 6, unfortunately, like the new iPhones. Uh, but Google doesn't seem to put much impetus on Wi-Fi 6 yet. Just yet because I guess it's not exactly widespread. There are lots of other interesting uh, features packed into the Pixel smartphones as well which are unique to these devices such as the new live transcribe as well but I'll be going through all of those in depth in my full Pixel 4 tips and tricks guys so stay tuned for that. Now let's shift on to the performance and it's a Snapdragon 855 chipset packed into both these devices not the latest 855 plus but there's not a huge jump between the two to be perfectly honest. The 855 is still nice and nippy I was going to do an Antutu or a Geekbench test unfortunately they're both blocked right now 
because this is of course pre-launch. You do get 6 gigs of RAM packed in both of them so you should get nice nippy performance for all your games with both of these devices. No difference as far as the storage goes, you get a choice for the 64 or 128 gigabytes with both of these devices, no micro SD expandability but they do both give you unlimited Google photo storage at least for all of your snaps and your videos. And on the battery front there is a big difference between these two devices. The Pixel 4 sports a much smaller 2800 milliamp battery compared with the 3700 milliamp packed into the Pixel 4 XL so that's a big jump up and I'm already noticing the gap starting to grow between these two as far as the battery life is concerned. So if you are going to be uh, really really hammering your smartphone all day long with all kinds of media stream and Skype use things like that you might want to consider the XL model. So you get 18 watt uh, wired fast charging uh, on both these devices not particularly fast unfortunately compared with some rivals from the likes of Huawei but does the trick and they both support Qi wireless charging as well. And last up it's time to check Check out that camera tech and you get the same exact rear camera on both of these pixel handsets. It's a 12.2 megapixel primary lens f1.7 aperture with optical image stabilization and EIS built in as well and that's backed by a 16 megapixel secondary lens. This is f2.4 again OIS and EIS built into both of those and this offers a two times optical zoom equivalent. And of course that means you get the same camera features on both of these devices as well. So just load up the camera app. It's your standard Pixel app, uh, so previous Pixel owners will be right at home. As you can see there, they are very simple point and shoot affairs, nice and simple. You've got motion enabled as well, so it just captures a little uh, living image, whatever the hell it's called, when you take each shot, and then that brings your galleries to life basically as you're flicking through. And if you're trying to shoot a photo with a tricky bit of HDR involved, a nice bright background like I am here, no worries at all, Google's got you covered. Of course, it's got its usual excellent HDR smarts, but now you can actually boost or lower the brightness of your subject as well to get exactly the kind of effect you want. And as you can see there, it doesn't affect the background brightness at all. It's very clever stuff indeed. And of course, you can tweak the overall brightness of the shot as well if that background is just that little bit too oversaturated. And then good to go. Your full portrait mode smarts, of course, and usually the Pixel handsets are great at capturing portrait shots, even with just a single lens. Now you've got a dual lens setup, hopefully, should be nice crisp edge detection, a good bit of bokeh effect. And of course, night sight is back and better than ever. You can now shoot uh, the actual constellations in the night sky if you don't live in a smoggy bubble like I do here in London. Frankly, you've probably got more chance of seeing Banksy, High Five and Boris Johnson than I will have actually seen any stars anytime soon. But I'll try and give it a go for my in-depth camera review, uh, so stay tuned for that. Now, of course, on the video front, you can shoot up to 4K resolution footage as usual. You can just drag down the, uh, the features like so. So as you can see there, you can switch between 30 frames per second and 60 frames per second. Open up the settings if you want to dive in here and let's boost it all the way up to Ultra HD. Unfortunately that can only be shot at 30 frames per second. You don't have the option of shooting 60 frames per second if you bump up to 4K. So that's a bit of a shame. And of course you've got more camera features if you tap here as well including the likes of the panorama, the photosphere, time lapse and slow motion if you want them as well. And of course the Google Lens naturally. And then if we just flip around to that front facing camera on both of these phones it's again the same. No difference between the Pixel 4 and the Pixel 4 XL. It's an 8 megapixel snapper f2.0 as you can see a nice wide angle finish uh, right there as well and capture nice sharp shots and lots of background action or lots of your chums all in the same frame and there you have it that in a nutshell is the new google pixel phone pixel 4 xl unboxed and compared side by side so you know which one might be best for you i really love the compact size of this pixel force compared to all of the massive titan android smartphones right now it's just pleasingly hand feelingly good i don't know if that's a term it is now and the xl model of course boasts the uh, the sharper screen you've got that bigger battery which is probably one of the major selling points as well. Um, so definitely if you're going to be hammering your smartphone all day long you might want to consider that bad boy. But both of them pack some excellent Android 10 specs and as I say full Pixel 4 review coming at you imminently and that will be followed up by the XL. So thanks for watching guys. Which one are you tempted by or are you not tempted by either? Definitely let us know in the comments down below and please do poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell for more on the latest and greatest mobile tech. Cheers everyone. Love you.